Hi everyone, I'm Senator Tina Smith and I'm really glad to have you join us today. And I'm here today with four really interesting dynamic uh, friends and allies from uh, community organizing and life. And I'm so excited to have a conversation with you all today. I hope you're all doing well. You good? <laughs> yeah. That's great. So joining me today um, first um, is um, my friend Melissa Franzen, who's um, state senator from Senate District 49. Melissa, just tell everyone where Senate District 49 is. Sure. It's the western suburbs, communities of Edina, Bloomington, Eden Prairie, Minnetonka. That's great. Thank you for being with us today. It's of great. Course. And I'm also really, really happy to see um, Maria Reagan Gonzalez, who is the mayor of Richfield, Minnesota. Everyone knows where Richfield, I think, is. It's a, an amazing community. Maria and I had a chance to get, go down and be together at the farmer's market not that long ago. That was so much fun. Yeah, that's great. Um, also, I'm so happy to be here with uh, my friend Patricia Torres Ray, who is some um, state senator from Senate District 63, really right next door to where Archie and I live here in Minneapolis. How are you, Patricia? I am great. So happy to be here with you this morning. Thank you. But thank you so much. And then Aisha Gomez, Aisha Gomez, who is House District 62B. Could you explain where that is for everyone? Sure. Um, so it's sort of the heart of South Minneapolis. Um, it goes from Lake Street down to 50th and Chicago to uh, Lindale. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great part of town, an amazing part of town. Well, so ladies, I, I know it's, is that, I hope that doesn't sound too. I love it. <laughs> <old fashioned. laughs> you know, I was just thinking about how much I've been looking forward to this conversation and, and but I want to start um, because we are barely a week past the tragic um, loss of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who has played such a significant role in our country. Uh, I've been thinking a lot this week about her creativity and her imagination. Everyone talks about how brilliant she was, but I've been thinking about how much imagination it took for her to imagine a world where there was gender um, equality. Um, in this country. And I wanted to just start off, all of you are organizers and all of you are uh, Latina leaders. I'm, I'm wondering if you would just say a little bit about what, what she meant to you and what it feels like to lose her in this moment, which is such a, um, a perilous moment um, in our country, it feels. Hmm. I, I can start. I was, uh, I'm an attorney by trade. So um, knowing that someone like her, when she started law school, um, of overcame so many challenges. Um, there are still challenges for women of color and women in the legal profession. Uh, as a Latina woman, we know we have the lowest ratio of uh, Latina um, legal professionals in, in, in the entire country. So there are still huge gaps. To, to know that she was one of the, the ones that opened that door for a lot of women to go through uh, is, is something that um, I don't take for granted. And also, um, I remember that day, I will never forget where I was at what time I received the news. Um, I was getting in my car to attend a bonfire with some other uh, friends of mine that are legal professionals um, by coincidence. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, I heard Nina Totenberg ta talking pretty much live. It was before I got the, the, the news. And um, that bonfire turned into um, a, a very different conversation about the, the role of this woman who was a pioneer for not just women, but equality and equity for right. all in the United mm -hmm. States and across the world. Uh, so for me, um, I've never cried uh, for someone who's died who I never met. But every time I hear news of her, and I heard the service uh, last Friday as well, um, it just brings tears to my eyes because uh, I, the the huge impact that she had and still will have in in our in our state and our world um, will never be forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say for me, she's just such an amazing role model for myself of what it looks like to be authentic um, and strong and powerful as a woman leader. And just the inspiration that she's given to so many young girls as well. So when I think of her, that's what I really think of is the, the role that she played in showing all of us women and girls that we are powerful and we can step mm -hmm. into that power and own it and what it looks like to do so authentically. Right, right, exactly. Exactly. You know, for me, um, it was a it was a, an interesting um, interview about her husband and uh, how, for her, 
it was it was just a given that her husband was going to be a partner in this deal right that that her leadership and her position was her responsibility but it was also his responsibility and i think that it was uh for me this this um really incredible message about who she was you know i i belong here in these tables of power i can make this decision but it's a given that I am here. My husband, or my husband is a given that I should be here. Mm -hmm. uh, I just uh, really love that perspective, you know, that we just don't have to work so hard right. by ourselves to tell everybody, of course I belong here, you know, women belong here. It's just like, of course, you know, my husband knows that I am here and he's a partner in this one. So I, mm -hmm. I just thought that that was such a remarkable thing that we need to, to talk about especially in the Latino community where, you know, we talk a lot about kind of what these partnerships should be uh, for women who are in power, for women leaders, that we need this. And you, Tina Smith, who have, you know, an incredible partner in your life and, uh, you know, your family, how significant mm -hmm. that is and, and how yeah. important. Yeah, yeah, that's, it's, uh, it's true. You know, I was raised by a father who always told me that I could do whatever I wanted to do. Um, in sort of the best sense of the word, I didn't, you know, I, he didn't presume that I wanted to go to law school or business school or do, you know, it's just like whatever, you know, you get to decide. And, um, you know, I graduated from college in 1980. So um, in some ways he was being optimistic <laughs> because there certainly were lots of barriers still. Um, you know, when I was graduating, there still are so many barriers for women. We know women in general are still only making about you know, well, what is it, about 80 cents for every dollar that a man makes and women of color, it's, you know, a much more, um, you know, a much, much bigger difference. So we, it's not as if the journey is done, that's for sure. Yeah, Aisha, how do you, what do you, how do you see this? Um, I think Latinas make 54 cents on the dollar, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, <laughs> uh, I loved what you said about, um, about imagination and connecting that to organizing. One of my, the, the kind of authors who I think has been like a really important guide to me in the last few years is Adrienne Marie Brown. She wrote a book called Emergent Strategy. Um, and she, she's an organizer, an African-American woman. She lives in Detroit. And, and she talks about organizing as like crafting science fiction, you know, that, that we have to, and, and in a way politics is like that too, because it's like we have to actually be able to bring all of our compassionate imagination to these situations that mm -hmm. our communities are in that seem so like intractable. And this moment in particular, right? I think that like, I don't know. I, I, I feel like we all collectively, like when she passed away, it was just like, oh, like seriously, this too? Like another, uh, yeah, you know, this like, too we have to, you in know, this, this moment, right? I know. And, and so I love that you held that up about her, about the way that she had to hold on to her belief in a different world. Because like, that's what's called of us in this moment, right? Mm -hmm. Or that's what yeah. we're called to in this moment, is yeah. to, to hold fast to a better world where our people are free and where all people are free. You know? Yeah. Well, um, you know, I, this makes me think of two things. One is that I have been struck by how personal it feels to lose her. And I've been struck, as I've been going around Minnesota, I've been struck by how personal everything that is happening right now feels. Um, the, the, um, the struggle over racial justice, the struggle over healthcare because of COVID, the economic struggles that families are going through. And, you know, we were, you were just saying something. We all, well, you've, you've, we've all heard the saying in politics, oh, politics is the art of the possible. But what if we said politics is the art of the impossible? Mm -hmm. You know, it's actually the art of imagining what should be and then figuring out how to make that happen. I often say, you know, people will say to me sometimes, Tina, how do you keep your, you know, your energy up? How do you keep your spirits up? And I said, you just have to be optimistic, which is maybe the other way of, another way of putting this. You have to be able to imagine the impossible, what seems impossible right now in order to get there, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But you know, part of, part of the issue, Senator, is that we have now a realization that there are just so many things that 
we should have that that we you know that we deserve as as human beings as members of this society of this wealthy country that we do not such a large number of people so this this thing of the impossible has become impossible for so many and it, it, it's so so this gap that exists uh, now we're realizing as a country yeah. how many people have been left out of this opportunity of this yeah. possibility right and i think that is why now we know it's very personal of course it is very personal because we're we so many of us have been left out of this opportunity of these dreams mm -hmm. um, and and that's not the united states of america right because here right. everybody's supposed to have those opportunities mm -hmm. and, um, and it takes a vision i want to give you some credit senator torres ray um in spanish we have madrinas which are um, in comadres, um, we call them people who special women who help other women and not just other women, the community as a whole. And I was recruited by Senator Torres Ray to run for office. And I'm sure all of us on this um, call has also have also been helped by Senator Torres Ray. And to have a vision of flipping a, a district back in 2012, uh, you know, from from red to blue in Edina and Bloomington in the western suburbs, it was doable, but it took someone um, vision to recruit someone like me to do the work in a, in a place that's really 2% Hispanic. So it wasn't because I got the Latino vote. It was because <laughs> there was vision that we can do the work regardless of our backgrounds. That's going to give us some, um, you know, the, that work ethic and that um, determination to do better. I never thought in my wildest dreams when I moved to Minnesota from Puerto Rico that I would be in the Minnesota Senate. That wasn't my calling, if you will. I did know I love public policy and I know that politics is a uh, a means to an end to accomplish good public policy for people. So um, I do want to give credit to the women here because all of us here help each other in many ways and work together mm -hmm. to help mm -hmm. our community as a whole and also our Latino community in Minnesota. Yeah, I can see Maria raising her hand. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was just gonna, I was just saying, yep, uh, La Senadora Patricia also recruited me as well. I was not thinking about running for office or being mayor, but when I started to work in my community, I said, wow, there's so many services, programs, opportunities that we want to realize in our community, but that we're missing because we don't have these relationships across difference, across different communities. And, uh, and I think part of my identity as a biracial Latina is that I am very good at that as to survive as a person i've had to um, bring people together across difference different ways of looking at the world different languages and i saw the need for that in richfield and um, didn't come from that political background but came from that background of knowing how to do change at the at the public policy level and bring people together across difference and if it wasn't for people like Senadora Patricia Torres Ray and Edwina Garcia and so many other powerful women I would have never thought that I had the power to run for office and I'm very mm -hmm. thankful. Mm -hmm. Yeah well I, I feel like I need to get in on the uh Senator Patricia <laughs> Torres Ray love fest here right? I, I this think is this is actually great. a surprise Patricia it's all just to talk about how fabulous That's just you are. Know, so you know, I'm so happy of these women you have no idea. <laughs> Idea how I like <laughs> continue, continue. Didn't in, didn't um, recruit me exactly, but did support me a lot in my race and was really generous with just like kind of just talking me through kind of those hard moments, lonely moments of campaigning. Um, and and I, I um, you know, our districts meet at 38th and, Ch and Chicago, 38th and Floyd or George Floyd Square, like our community refers to it now, and. Um, I guess I just think about, um, you know, this summer has been so challenging in our districts and in our community and particularly, you know, like, I mean, I represent a lot of businesses that were impacted by the civil unrest. We've been working to try to get resources to our communities, especially like our Latino business community was really heavily impacted on East Lake Street by the civil unrest. And Senator Torres Rey has just been everywhere so present and really just like showing what leadership is really about like that's what that, the challenge this summer is just like god these moments that are so like that call us kind of to these um just to our to our highest and best selves for in service mm -hmm. of our community are it's just been really so hard but 
seeing, you know, I, I mean, honestly, as I'm sitting here, I'm like, okay, so like the Posse Caucus did all of this, um, you know, police reform work. And Patricia was so um, instrumental in keeping us strong and saying like, we're not gonna accept this bare minimum first offer. Like, we're just not gonna do it. Our communities deserve better. So I really feel like your strength, Patricia, helped us to kind of like stick with it and really get something substantive out of what, it, it was not a foregone conclusion that we were gonna get anything substantive yeah. out of Paul right? Yeah. Um, and from, from the issues around homelessness encampments to the business support, to being, you know, going in the morning to George Floyd Square and arranging flowers and doing that basic labor of love service that we do for our communities in times of need. I just, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate your leadership so much. You know, the, the um, it, it, it makes me think about a couple of things listening to you all um, talk about this. We are um, I, uh, in the midst of um, um, Hispanic Heritage Month. And you are all such strong uh, Latina leaders and women leaders. And as you're saying, we have had a summer where there has been such a demand on all of our leadership. You know, a, a need to be a need to be present, to be kind of accessible and there for people with like empathy and strength. And I'm sure that this summer uh, and whole year has called on all of you in different ways. And I'm just interested to know. Like what that, like, could you just talk a little bit about what that feels like and where you get your, you know, kind of where you find strength in moments that are really difficult as, you know, this, this word intersectionality is kind of a little bit of a buzzword right now, but I'm so interested in that intersectionality between being women leaders and being Latina leaders in a moment where leadership is so, uh, so needed, so being called out for. It's, it's a big question. I mean, we all are struggling with our own personal lives being uh, with, you know, with COVID and having, um, not being with COVID, but living with COVID and whether we have young kids or older family members that we're not able to see. Um, it, it, it's also heavy on us as leaders. Yeah. So we have to channel that and also um, put a good um, face, if you will, in, 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 in these times and bring the voice of, of not just our, our own personal stories, but also our community um, and, and this has all been really, um, challenging. I, I even got a call today from a constituent, very upset about the emergency powers of the governor. And I responded to, well, there's no national plan. So that was part of my response. And, and, mm -hmm. I, and, and it, it just turned political. And I'm, well, we, we have to have a plan in Minnesota when there's no leadership at the federal level. And I'm so glad you're there because if we flip the, the U S Senate, as much as we can flip the Minnesota Senate, we can have government that actually uh, takes care of us, right? That that is the role of government, a good government. And, and that has been my, my fight to really um, let people know that the role of government, especially during a pandemic, is to take care of the public health, to make sure we have the resources we need um, to be a partner to, to the business community. Um, no one wants the economy to, to go, you know, to, to, to end. We, we need a strong economy, especially here in Minnesota with so many great companies that are headquartered here. Um, so you have to shift gears is what I'm trying to say from a mom mm -hmm. to, um, you know, right. a, a senator to um, defending potentially what your what your vote on is on the set in this in the Minnesota Senate to say this national election matters. And that's why we're here supporting you, um, Senator Tina Smith, which I just got a breaking news that you're leading in the polls, but um, it doesn't um, necessarily <laughs> um, we can't take it for granted, is my point. Um, That's right. We need good leadership and good government. Um, other things like ranked choice voting is a, another thing that's happening in our local communities that we're wanting that to, to move forward because wouldn't it be great to have more choice of people that want to be leaders in our community so we mm -hmm. don't have just two people, to, but we have a bigger diversity of people. Um, I think things, systems like that um, help us um, get democracy to the people. And, and we've noticed with what's happened in Minneapolis, I have a small business in Minneapolis um, and on Lake and Lindale. And I, but I was very differently affected than the core Lake Street, um, East uh, and, and West Lake Street were differently affected and other parts of, of Minneapolis mm -hmm. and St. Paul. But it mm -hmm. all affects all of us. If, if, yeah. if the core of the cities d d doesn't do well, so does the rest of the state. So um, yeah. it's how do we shift gears, but also think of the broader picture that we all want to succeed. 
right? And it's your life. You know, you've got issues that we're all, you know, we're all trying to figure out, you know, cope with our own lives with all the, you know, the wonderful things and the sad things, the hard things. Like I haven't been able to see my father who's 90 and I became a grandmother this summer. So those two things together are, you know, are so, um, there's just so much happening. Yeah. And I would just add that this, um, this has been a tremendously challenging time for all of us. And it's also been a moment to really reflect on what is happening. And for so many, so many years and generations, we've said, we can't do that. We can't do that. The system doesn't allow for that. In over 10 days, overnight, we were able to do so many different things that we have always said we can't do, we can't do. But when it was just affecting our children of color, we couldn't do it. And now mm -hmm. when it affected everybody's children, all of a sudden we radically changed the way we're living. And so it's like facing these really tough questions um, in our basic humanity and saying, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. How do we see our families of color? How do we see and, and are the lives of some more valuable as others? And with George Floyd's killing, we're seeing the same thing. So it's a time to really reflect on these difficult things in the way that we treat each other and how can we get back to the basic humanity and what does that look like internally on an individual level because this has been so hard on people's mental health on physical health on our incomes um, but then also collectively as leaders how do we provide space to think about these things together and then say all right we know this isn't working what are we going to do and let's think out of the box because the time to do that is now yeah. Yeah. That's so true. Aisha, where do you get your strength as you are coping with, you know, there's so many, so many things that people need? Yeah. I mean, it's, it is, uh, <laughs> it's sort of like these times of, um, you know, the veil being lifted are very right. super challenging. Like, you know, like, Maria was just talking about though, but like also are this fertile ground for exploration and for digging deeper, I mm -hmm. think. And so, mm -hmm. so, you know, I think sometimes about um, <clears throat> just like the things that happened in our communities and that are still happening as far as like, like the ways that people are showing up for each other still in, in the aftermath kind of, of the murder of George Floyd and, and the civil unrest and, you know, the Senator, Torres Ray and I both still have, you know, encampments in our in our districts of unsheltered people and seeing the ways that neighbors are showing up, seeing the ways that people are showing up, right. seeing the ways that, you know, I know that I've I just am really, you know, the communication that I get about the challenges that our community is, is facing around unsheltered homelessness are just compassionate and loving, like first of all, right? Yeah. And 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 deeply re like recognizing of that shared humanity that that the mayor talked about um mm -hmm. and so yeah i mean it's it's just like this work is hard it takes a lot but it's also like it gives you so much in that like getting to mm -hmm. see um it's sort of an it's an honor to and a privilege to be able to see all so many of the things that are happening right. in our community that are maybe like hidden sometimes Mm -hmm. Like, that's one of the cool things about this vantage point, I think, mm -hmm. is like, that, that more than ever, I guess, I'm like, our communities have what we need. Our, yeah. Like, we live in a world of abundance, and we have like a distribution problem. Basically. That's exactly like, right. That we have, yeah. we have yes. crafted public policy and allowed public policy to be crafted that mm -hmm. does not ensure uh, you know, an equal shot, an equal chance, an equal distribution of the goods mm -hmm. of our society mm -hmm. to all people. And so that's like our challenge now. Um, right. But, but we yeah, can God, fix I love that something. You. That's where we need imagination again, right? That's right, right. We but need, seeing yeah. that like mutual aid in action has been really Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I was, um, I was just really resonating. I want to. I want to kind of get us to talking a little bit. Since this election is only thirty-seven days away now, people have already started voting, um, and um, 
uh, I was thinking about what uh, you were just saying about how uh, this one of the things about the jobs that we all have is that we are able to be present in people's lives in ways that you don't otherwise normally get away a chance to do. I first realized this when I became lieutenant governor and I said it was like being invited into Minnesota's living room. You, you know, you could go, you, you just be, you could be invited in and people will tell you things about what's happening in their lives, what's going on with their children, what they need, what they hope for, what they're afraid of. And it's a, it is a, such a privilege. And then the question is how to turn that listening into action in order to actually change the way things, the systems work. So as you say, we can fix that distribution problem. That means that we are not li actually living in a time of scarcity. The problem is that there are too many, pl you know, there's places where there's so much and then there's places where there's so little. So how does this resonate with people as we're all trying to figure out um, how to help people use their voice, use their power in this election to organize and to, and to vote, which is what is the huge challenge before us. And what I truly believe is the most important election in my lifetime. Patricia, you you're an amazing granted. organizer. How are you? What are you hearing when you're out talking to people in your community about uh, their, their sense of what we could do in this election if we vote? You know, there is a, it, it's difficult to describe, in my opinion, what is happening right now, because there is a sense of deep frustration, right? That, that mm -hmm. government is not listening, that, that the, um, you know, the deep divide that exists right now, that we're so polarized, that the gaps that exist, you know, economically are so significant. On the other hand, there is just this enormous energy, you know, this desire to go and just do whatever is necessary. And uh, it's, it's kind of a, you know, in my view, a radical way of thinking, and I love it, <laughs> simply because I think that we've gone too far in terms of accepting that these inequities are part of who we are as a nation. So I, I believe that it's necessary that we go at it with this kind of radical way of thinking. You don't know. That needs to change, and we need drastic transformations uh, at every level, you know, from criminal justice reform to economic reform, to education, healthcare. Mm -hmm. So on one hand, there is just kind of this deep frustration and people feeling like, you know, what can I do? This is so big. Like, you know, the Supreme Court issue, people are feeling like, what can I do? You know, the Republicans are gonna do this. But on the other hand, we're just kind of, we have to get Tina elected. We have to get her a majority, right? We need to get, we need to flip the Senate. So it's kind of these two big forces that mm -hmm. are coming mm -hmm. together. And I just very much hope that we are able to, to really continue that because that's the only way. Yeah, these realities exist, right? This divide, this polarization that this president, you know, has really exacerbated. Um, all of that is, is real, it exists. But at the same time, we have this significant power, uh, this, this wealth, this energy, all of these young people who want to transform things. This is ours and, and we're gonna get it done. So yeah. I, I, that's what I feel, you know, so it's hard. Some days I wake up and I just read the news and I go like, am I gonna do another, you know, really posting that is just so sad and <laughs> terrible or do I pick this message that is more I know. uplifting? Yeah. Probably you feel the same way. That it's I right. totally, I'm sure we all feel the same way, right? Do I, you know? <laughs> what do I post <laughs> today? Yes. You know, yes. how do I communicate? What message do I pick today, you know, to communicate to people? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Please. Don't you feel this, uh, you know, this need, you sort of, I mean, I feel this every day. I share in the sense, the deep sense of frustration about wanting to do more, wanting to do bigger things and uh, tapping into that and also, um, trying to, uh, you know, be, so be, be optimistic about what we can accomplish uh, at the same time that we have to, you know, help people to understand their power. And, and, but then we have to, we have to make that real though. It can't just be a promise. And then after we win, we say, oh, it's all going to, you know, oh, well, we can't do that. We can't do that. That's too hard. That's just not an option for us, I don't think. That's right. Yeah. Well, I could sit and talk with you amazing women for another four hours. If we were actually in a coffee shop or in our, or, or in my kitchen or in one of your kitchens, we probably would sit around for another 
you know, happily, of course, except that we're all too busy, so we wouldn't be able to. <laughs> I know you probably are all thinking about what all of the 25 other things that you have to do today <laughs> as well. So could I just say thank you so much for the leadership that you bring and the, the spirit and the heart that you bring to your communities. And um, it's just my, uh, it's, such a, it's such an honor to be able to know you and to work with you. And um, uh, I am so, um, so convinced that we can make big change in this country. Uh, and uh, we, we have the power to make that real. We just have to, we just have to make that power happen uh, in the next uh, 37 days or even starting tomorrow, if you wanna vote early tomorrow. No. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you for being the Senate. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's wonderful and to be with keeping you. you keeping you, we really appreciate you. We really appreciate that you are a hardworking woman who are so authentic, who really believe in these possibilities and work so hard. You know, when I open social media and I see you all over the state, you're connecting with everyone. I just can't, I think about, you know, how do you do this? How do you go from quarter <laughs> to Just like all of you do. Day. <laughs> so keep connecting with our communities. Uh, we, we really appreciate you. We love you. We admire you. And we want you to be in the majority. We really do. We have great hope. And, and you bring that hope to our state. We, we just imagine this future that you were asking us to imagine. So we're imagining you in the majority and the <laughs> possibilities, you know, really, really for so many issues. So we're well, very grateful for your leadership. And we really hope that we're able to flip the Senate. Which well, is we're really going to flip both Senates, the State Senate and the That's United right. States Senate. Please. And, uh, uh, and we'll, just like as a, as a group of women, can't we say how exciting it will be to say Vice President Kamala Harris as well? Absolutely. So, absolutely. Yeah. See you well, have a, Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. It's wonderful to see you. Thank you. And I'll see you it's all the next time. Thanks for sitting in on this conversation. And I look forward to having you join us again the next time. Bye. 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 Bye.